We are here with the Medion Challenge Lower Bracket Round 2, Game Number 2. Moscow 5 just took out MYM in a very strong performance. And uh, we're going to have to see whether or not MYM can come back in Game Number 2. C-Zone, what do you think? Um, now, I want to be nice to them, and obviously they do have a chance, but I'm not f expecting M5 to, uh, to lose this game, to be honest. Um, there is quite a bit on the line. I mean, it's still a um, thousand uh, euros, I think, as well as five laptops. Um, plus, their sleep, because it is uh, around 3 a.m., uh, I think, in uh, over where Pepper lives. Um, goes to Pepper. Uh, it's all very late for them, so they, I think, they want to finish quickly so that they can go to sleep. Well, and of course. Uh, Ghost Pepper actually has something going on tomorrow, which he has to sleep for. So, uh. well, fair <laughs> enough. It actually uh, prevented him playing in a another tournament a couple of weeks back. They had to get a substitute in because of the uh, time zone differences. But regardless, we've seen four bands so far. MYM have removed Jax Morgana, see, and uh, Moscow Five have removed Twisted Fate and Carthus. So we're going to have to see uh, who the remaining bands are going to be. Obviously not wanting to deal with that Jax again. Darian tearing faces apart in the previous match. Final ban is going to be Shen. So I like the bans coming out from uh, MYM at the moment. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm wondering what the last ban is going to be. It's probably going to be something that they, um, they don't want to deal with. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Urgot. Um, because well, that has been banned and played quite a lot uh, lately. I wonder if MYM actually play Urgot. We haven't seen them doing it just yet. So it was a Cassiopeia. And immediately as we talk about it, first pick Urgot. So let's see how Moscow 5 counter that actually. Because, um, you know, they were the ones that sort of made tanky Urgot popular uh, uh, fairly recently. And I'd like to see uh, who do they think is going to counter that particular champion in lane. I'm, I'm not very sure, to be honest. Um... Oh, there's going to be a Lee Sin Instalog. Really likes that champion. Actually, that got banned the past few games, so uh, maybe Mokat is a really good uh, Lee Sin. It might, that might be true. Um, I don't know MYM uh, too well myself, so uh, sorry for not knowing that. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if he was just a really good Lee Sin. They're going to pick up Alistair as well. So that's um, either going to be an Alistair jungle and a Lee Sin in the top. Or what I'm expecting is a uh, Urgot Alistair lane, which is quite strong. Um, there's going to be a Blitzcrank Ezreal lane on the other side. And I'm excited for that because that seems like a lot of fun. There's going to be an Evelyn uh, Chosen not looked in yet. And that's definitely not going to be picked um, unless they want to troll around. No, no, it's I a placeholder. It is a placeholder. So um, Evelyn is just going to be confirmed or somebody else will... Uh Libic doesn't have the champion that they really want to actually hold on to. Um, oh, I'm, I'm interested. Oh, there we go. Swap to Aureli at the last second. Um, I'm interested to see how this uh, Ezreal Urgot lane is going to work. Uh, sorry, Ezreal um, uh, Blitzcrank lane is going to work out because it'll be good to to counter the aggression that Alistair's going to be putting down. But uh, and of course you've got the arcane shift that's going to get Ezreal out of range of Urgot. But it's a very defensive setup. You know, it's a it's a reactive setup as opposed to a, an aggressive um, kill setup, which maybe the likes of a, a Tarek Corky might have been very good to shred the armor, you know, get through Ooh. some of the defense. And we do see Darius being selected by Darian. Darian, Darian. Darius. Darian on so Darius. Confusing. Hell yes. I'm very much looking forward to that. But that's just Darius. Um, no one gets the joke, probably, but... Um, <laughs> Some people will. So, Darius. I almost said Darian again. That's going to be very interesting to see. Um, people, Some people think he's overpowered. I personally don't uh, agree with that because he is very kiteable. But his ultimate is definitely uh, a tad too strong. Well, so this, will actually, be, this will actually be the first game that I've seen Darius being played. Uh, since the patch <laughs> came out last week, unfortunately, I was moving apartments over the weekend. And I couldn't get a chance to actually see him in game. Uh, was playing a bit of Diablo 3 instead. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I can tell you that his ultimate it. is amazing to yep, look at. Yep, that uh, Noxian Guillotine, I believe it is. So I'm looking so forward awesome. to seeing how it plays out. So let's see how these lanes are going to match up. We are going to have Urgot, 
Alistair in the bottom lane. We're going to have potentially Kennen in the middle. Yeah, Jari's going to be playing Kennen in the middle, and Irelia's going to be in the top. Their opponents are going to be Darius in the top lane against Irelia. We have Ezreal and uh, Blitzcrank in the bottom lane. Ari in the mid, and of course Diamond Prox playing Nocturne in the jungle. So this should be a pretty good one. Um, before we get into the rest of the things, I just want to let everybody know about the, the tournament that's currently running. If you head over to esportsheaven.net, you can take a look for the Medion Challenge. All you're going to do is head over to the results page and click on a game. Today's game, for example, is uh, lower bracket round two, Moscow 5 versus MYM. And vote for who you think is going to be man of the match. Log in, vote for your potential man of the match, and you guys actually stand a chance to win yourselves a uh, Medion Gaming Hamper. And of course, today's Medion Challenge is brought to you by Esports Heaven, Medion Intel, Chaos TV, and Shoutcaster by myself in C-Zone. So people are asking for um, the room page of uh, Alec Itch, Itch, and it's going to be uh, Ability Power, Magic Penetration, uh, Scaling Mana Region, and... Uh, magic resist and his masteries are going to be 2109. Pretty standard AP page. Um, going for the mana regen. Uh, people usually ought to go for mana regen or for uh, ability power, either scaling or flat. Um, but Alex each going for this, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a remake. Lovely. Uh, okay, so the whole game was quit? Apparently. They probably had some kind of rune problem. Alright, so we'll find out. Uh, invite for remake, please. So while we're doing that, guys, I'm going to do a little shameless bump, I suppose. Uh, if you've <laughs> had a little bit of fun with our casting today, feel free to drop by either of our uh, fan pages on Facebook at the moment. You can find us at facebook.com forward slash owns. That's with a zero and then a Z. Uh, and of course, facebook.com forward slash quickshot, Q U 1 K S H 0 T. Uh, if you've and had some I'll fun with I'll be dumping in the chat, by the way. Ah, awesome. So links, links will be in the chat. Uh, it, you know, if you enjoy it, if you want to keep tabs, the support that you have on the Facebook pages keeps us doing what we're doing. So uh, accept your invite if you can. See zone. Oh, you're yes, in. I Great. just have to get into the uh, spectator spot. And um, should be starting in a tiny bit. So we are in a blind pick at the moment, guys. You can see that M5 versus MYM blind pick on the right-hand side. This is game number two in lower bracket round number two. So we're looking forward to this match. And, of course, if Moscow 5 win, they knock MYM out. If MYM win, we go to round number three because of this is, of course, a best of three tournament. The teams are playing for 1,000 euros in cash and five Medion Eraser Notebooks. So there's quite a lot on the line. Those of you that can't do the math, that's one laptop each, guys. One laptop each. So it should be very, very cool. I'm looking forward to this game. I'm looking forward to seeing Darius. I have not seen this champion before. I love his ult animation. It's so good. It's basically a Garen ult, but true damage and the cooldown refreshes and it's better in every other way. Um, but like, Garen is very knightly. He kind of like throws his sword. He's like, here you go, now you die. But Darion, he just jumps up, puts his weight, and he's got roar, and people die. It's so awesome. So I, I, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's going to be interesting to watch how it plays out because it's the uh, Noxian version of Garen, isn't he? Well, yeah, that's what he's meant to be. Um, pretty much, yeah. So we'll have a, a very close look. Of course, he hasn't been... I, I've read a lot of posts saying that apparently he's uh, overpowered and OP and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not... Uh, he actually is as OP as people say. So what I'm going to do, we do have three minutes to kill before we go up, guys. So we do have to put one advert break before we start the game. And when we're back, we'll have a look at a few more rune pages. And then we'll be live with M5 versus MYM. So advert is running. For anybody that is still on the stream, I'm just going to be going through the rune pages one by one, starting up at uh, Makla. Uh, not everybody gets them, so let's have oh, a Mackler. I think I called him Mocker all the time. Mm. Yeah, I think it's an A, so I'm I'm sticking with the A at the moment. So Ergo Cena, six point eight attack damage, fifteen armor pen, six percent cooldown reduction, and thirteen armor. That's not too bad. Um Charu's cannon should be an interesting one as well. Let's see how he's going with that. 
7 armor, 15 magic pen, 11 magic resist at level 18, 7 magic resist base, and 11 armor at level 18. So that's a fairly unique one, actually, if you look at the, um, uh, you know, sort of the standard runes that you would take on a cannon, having some flat, some level ups, etc. Uh, well, we've looked at Darian's already. Let's see what Gosu Pepper is currently running on Blitzcrank. Mana, plus 168. Obviously, that's going to help out his Mana Shield passive. I'll have to keep using his abilities. 24 MR, 3 GP10, and plus 14 armor. I'm just uh, drinking something at the moment if you're... Uh, no <laughs> problem at all, no problem at all. Um, Diamond Prox is Nocturne. Let's have a nosy at that. I love the uh, ranked team name for Moscow 5. Evil Boss Attacks Lizard. Uh... Uh, Nocturne at the moment, 6.8 physical damage, 5 armor penetration, 13 base armor, 24 magic resist, and 10% attack speed. So again, you know, building up a whole bunch of different types of uh, abilities or, or uh, increasing a, a larger number of base stats. Mokats Lee Sin, one more set of runes to have a look at. 13 armor, 24 MR, 15 physical damage. That's exactly what I use uh, on my Lee Sin, so <laughs> not too bad. You're a pro player, dude. Well, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far at all. <laughs> so we are down to the last 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to ask chat, because we have a huge number of people in chat, um, to vote once. Okay, slow mode is on. Vote once. Who do you think is going to win this game? Can MYM pull one back, or will Moscow 5 knock MYM out of this particular one? And that's two options, so no TSM. <laughs> I, I hate Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate Twitch chat. Oh, my people my are all words. saying M5 because they're nice. Well, you guys are awesome. My, my chat, I think I'm going to break the server, actually, because everybody <laughs> is spamming like you cannot believe. So let's have a look at the skins. We've got Boom Boom Blintzcrank, Midnight Ari, and I believe those are the standard Dar um, Darius Airs and Nocturne skins. Yeah, but someone's saying TSM will lose. Oh, wow, great, That's great, That's a great. new one. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Battlecast Urgot and Dragon Fist Lee Sin. I think it looks like Jackie Chan wearing Ray-Bans. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's all I see every time I see that particular skin. Ooh, I do, however, need to change my overlay. Sorry about that little, little uh, glitch there. So let's have a look. We are into the game now. Moscow 5 on the right-hand side. MYM on the left-hand side. Score is 1-0. to zero. In favor of Moscow 5. So right now everyone has bought their first items. There's actually going to be 5 boots on the M5. So they're going to be very quick. And they might be going for a uh, level 1. Diamond procs. Um, oh wait, not for M5. Sorry for that. I meant um, MYM obviously. And um, they might be going for a level 1. They've got a decent level 1 actually. With the uh, Acid Hunters. The Pearl Fries. And the... Uh, the Thundering Shuriken, as well as the um, Sonic Wave being able to face check, and there comes Blitz from Gozu Papri is going to be caught out and is going to be ignited. He's going to go down though. Yes, he will do first blood for Mackler, and um, he's going to be picking it up. Going to be a very happy Urgot robot thing. Hmm. I hadn't noticed that yet. So um, he will be very happy with that. He will be able to get a. Uh, Dorn's, well, he's not going to go for Dorn's Blade, most likely. He will be able to get his um, his item very quickly. Uh, I I'm not sure what he's going for. Um, but that does put them at a 600 gold advantage because of all the assists as well. Um, only the support, Libic, did not get an assist. And, well, gold is less important than the support anyway. So that's that's completely survivable. And uh, Gosu Pepper seems to be going for another face check. Mm. No, it's going to stand at Wolves. One thing I'm a little bit nervous about, the fact that Urgot was the one that picked up that first blood. Urgot already has a very, very strong laning phase, and um, having that bonus gold means he's going to be able to pick up a Brutalizer earlier, maybe even going for the Glacial Shroud if he wants to go for the tanky route. You know, we'll have to see exactly what he wants to build. But, um, being able to have that bonus 400 gold and pick up that item before Genji is going to be able to do so on Ezreal, it's going to make the lane even harder. Whether or not Gosu Pepper is going to be able to secure any uh, very nice rocket grabs into Power Fist combos, that will obviously change the pace of the lane. 
Uh, so we're going to have to just keep a very close eye on it. Now, Darian, this is the first time I'm watching him, so I have to familiarize myself with his names. Decimate, Crippling Strike, Apprehend, and Noxian Guillotine. Apprehend is his little rake ability that pulls everybody towards him, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. Um, I think it's nice that they call it Apprehend. Sounds very, uh, very nice. Kind of like, hey, come over here, instead of... <laughs> but, well, um, the bottom lane we've got I a just, I just realized, um, I think MYM is... It sounds a bit sad that they're on the uh, on the bottom left side. Um, I think they'd rather be on the other side, because then they could give blue buffs to Urgot, because they have two energy uh, champions. Both their jungler and their mid are energy-based. So, and the blue buff on Macro would be insane, but unfortunately they are on the uh, bottom left and they will not be able to do that. They might give it to uh, Caroline. Uh, you can probably get, put it to pretty good use too, or they'll just keep it on the uh, the energy champions. They could also donate it. Oh, look at the bottom lane. A very nice pulverized headbutt coming out. Ghost Pepper is going to be moving backwards, trying to get into range. The Ignite might be able to pick up the kill. One more <laughs> long range. Acid Hunter is going to be able to do it. The Power Fist, a couple of auto attacks, and Ghost Pepper trying to get that kill. But wow, what a, a huge, huge um, uh, uh, Acid Hunter kill there coming out from Muckler. That Rocker just hit him so hard. And oh wow, that grab almost hit, and that might have been a kill. And it uh, kind of looked like some actions up, but that didn't quite work out. It got really close though to uh, Makla dying, thanks to a great rocket grab from uh, from Gosu Pepper, but he wasn't quite able to do that. And um, in the end, they got a kill, and uh, that's two deaths already for the M5 bot lane. And this will uh, this will definitely help uh, Makla a lot. He's gonna have two Doran's blades and some wards, and that's gonna give him a huge advantage in lane. He's gonna be at. Um, 89 uh, AD right now, and that makes his uh, his asset hunter do more than a hundred damage. And if you look at everyone's health, that's about one fifth of their health, one fifth to one seventh. That's that's pretty good. And of like. course, with the uh, cooldown <laughs> reduction that he's already built onto that particular champion, he's going to get a couple, you know, one extra asset hunter out potentially. Uh, every couple of times, and you've seen just how powerful that it is. Genji was able to, to use that arcane shift to get away, followed up with summon a heal, but at the absolute max range, uh, Asset Hunter flew all the way around. Darian, a strong champion or strong top lane player, but Darius in a duel 1v1 should not be able to defeat an Irelia. There's no innate sustain, there's no crowd control other than that, you know, leash to pull backwards. Yes, it's got a lot of damage in the mid lane, damage goes down, the electrical shuriken misses! Zaru d commits to the dive and he, he completely misses that thundering shuriken, sorry. And unfortunately ends up giving a free kill to Genja. And I now was missing that because I was looking at bot where there is going to be a dive in, but oh wow, great grab. It's going to put Linic at Ilivik at a great... Bleh. Pretty big peril there, but he does get away with a flash. Got really close though, and now there's going to be a gank from Caroline down to mid, and oh wow, he misses his E, that was very unfortunate. Equilibrium Strike hit, hit a minion and not Alex E, otherwise he would have probably gotten that kill. But um, And of course a very good charm coming out from Alexis as well, ridiculous. super super low on mana. Lands the charm in the face, and uh, it just stops Caroline in his tracks, unable to continue the pressure. So having a look at how Gosu Pepper's leveling up, we've seen a couple of Blitzcranks recently in the last week and a half, two weeks. At the moment he's got one point into that rocket grab, two points into the overdrive and a single point into his power fist. A very nice pulverized headbutt comes out from, uh, uh, huh? of course, Libic. Acid Hunter's going to be more than enough damage to kill Genja. And it just looks like a little bit like easy mode at the moment for Makla and Libic in this bottom lane. Well, Makla did get a first blood and then another kill afterwards. That just gives so much damage, especially when you're playing Urgot. As I said, he does more than 100 damage, and that's like one-fifth of, uh, of Genja's HP. So that just hurts a lot, and Mokatsi was looking for a gank in mid, but he was not uh, able to uh, actually do something with that, so he's going to be moving back into his jungle. And, um, yeah, it was just... It's just that they, they're ahead and they're going to keep building on this. Because Urgot is already strong in the lane and with the uh, advantage he got, he's going to do even more damage. So his E does around 80 damage as well, uh, 90 actually. So it's about 200 damage for an E and one Acid Hunter. 
And that acid hunter actually got higher base damage by now. So it does uh, 150 damage. Oh, so there's going to be a slight trade here. But it looks like Darren is going to be just fine, doing a lot of damage. Yeah, actually, yeah, and he is going to use his ultimate, and he will be picking up that kill with the ignite. And as I told you, he just completely dunks people with his ultimate. It looks so cool. So much damage coming out from Darius or Darian in the top lane. And that may actually open it up for a dragon at the moment. They see that the bottom lane is missing. So they immediately turn their pressure onto this drake. Genja's tanking it though. He's going to have to be a little bit careful. Uses that arcane shift to get away. Immediately comes back in once Diamond Prox is the one pulling the damage. Now we're going to see. There comes a pop as a very nice smite coming out from Diamond Prox. The charm does land in the face of Mokat, but not enough. Spirit Rush falls backwards just to get to safety. Charu is considering a flash slicing Maelstrom, but unfortunately it's on cooldown, so he's not going to be able to do it. Charm to the face. That's going to kill the pressure. And even though they're behind on kills, Moscow 5 even up the gold score thanks to that dragon kill. It was... Um, if for people that were wondering, because I was wondering the same thing, uh, Mackler was standing at bottom, he was uh, farming two creep waves, which is why he didn't come to Dragon, because two creep waves are quite a bit in uh, in a bot lane, but I don't know, I think he could have grabbed some easy kills if he came to Dragon, because they were all not able to tank the Dragon, and um, I'm not sure if that was the best call to go for those creep waves. Yeah, well, they did lose the Dragon, you know, the the the... the MYM players got to the dragon a bit late. Even if they had been in, you know, a little bit more in position, they were still joining the party late. And it's it's very difficult to to jump in and commit to a fight when you're a bit out of position. And from the majority of team fights I've seen for those like pincer movements, teams coming from the top of the river and the bottom of the river, they very very seldom work out. And the reason for that, when you've got a team that has got, you know, the blitzcrank, Ari. Um, as well as Ezreal, and the damage that they can put out very, very quickly, it's it's hard to commit to a big fight when you've got somebody that's going to be instantly blown up from a five-man Moscow 5. So either way, 200 gold Moscow 5 in the lead, 3-2 to two in kills. Bottom lane heavily in favor of MYM at the moment. 3-0 on Urgot. He's 20 creeps ahead and 3 kills. Brutalizer and Double Doran's completed. He's hitting very, very hard right now. Yeah, because he is getting the uh, 15 armor press, uh, penetration and the um, cooldown reduction as well, so that means even more asset hunters. I'm pretty sure that means one extra asset hunter in the uh, in the uh, length of the corrosive uh, charge. And up oh, so Darian is going to be going in, and there's going to be a paranoia. They are going to be going for this. The fear is going to proc, and they are going to be diving this. And there comes the dunk. Not quite picking up the kill, but it's not a team fight, so he doesn't really care that his ultimate doesn't get reset. Um, in the meantime, MYM picking up the blue buff of M5 and... Well, the kill um, actually like went to him and it did yeah, look like it reset it. Did it? Yeah, oh, wow. cooldown is refreshed if it kills the target. So, once again, that cooldown is available. Char is going to commit to this fight, lands the electrical surge and a flash coming out from Genja. Very nice flash, in fact, going over one of the, the thicker walls in the game. Actually, I think that what happened is that his... Um, this passive, the Hammer Age, uh, I think it's called. Wait, let me check that Ooh, real look quick. Look at Diamond Prox, he's potentially going to run into two. Yes. Mokat and Charu, they fall back at the same time. Gosu Pepper looks like he's in a little bit of trouble. And wow. So it was the Hammer Age. The Hammer Age probably picks up the kill, and uh, because it was within one second, they probably counted it as uh, as being the ultimate that killed it. But it wasn't. It resets it wasn't if you're involved in a kill, according to chat. So, it is. oh, there we go. Very nice rocket grab into the Power Fist. Libic's taking a lot of damage, but an unbreakable will. He can just tank the tower all day long. Not really have a problem there. It's just, it doesn't say something to tooltip though, so... Mm, I'm not sure, guys. Yeah, apparently it's a bug. We'll that uh, if uh, within half a second of it being used, somebody dies, it gets reset. So, you know, that's uh, the matter. It doesn't really make a huge difference because it's extremely powerful and it will be hot fixed at some point. But we will need to just <laughs> keep a close eye on Darius. Or Darien, rather and see exactly how he's going to be doing it with that kill that he picked up. He's now got the blue buff. I didn't actually see where he picked that up from. Ignite uh, is going to go. He's the, pushing uh, forward. Oh, so wow. much damage. The ultimate comes out. A couple of auto attacks. And that time round, it did not reset the ultimate, as you can see. He's using death yeah, I, think I think the half a second thing is uh, very feasible. He actually took the blue buff um, while MYM was taking the, uh, the blue buff of uh, M5. 
And look at the setup right now. Iri and Blitzcrank sitting in this bottom grass. It looked like they were setting up to push onto Maclap, but decided not to. He's going to push forward. A very nice charm. That's going to hold Lipic in place. Lipic moves forward, and that's both of them up with the Pulverize. He's almost going to get away, but the final tick of that Spirit Rush will do all the damage that's necessary. <laughs> a blind Electrical Shur or Thundering Shuriken will actually pick up that kill. Lightning Surge lands, so that's going to stun Ghost of Pepper. Mana Shield should proc if it's available. Ah, Fortune did look like it's on cooldown. So a double uh, kill from Sharu. Very nicely done. Very well played there. Picking up that Thundering Shuriken through the wall without having proper vision and uh, managing to land I it. Something I thought was really well done by Libic is that um, he was able to actually use... Oh wow, Mokat, Mokat is going through the tower and pretty much giving a free kill. He probably didn't know that Diamond Brock was there, but still. Don't know why exactly he walked through the middle like that. Wasn't really a clear reason to. Maybe he got disconnected or something. It looked really weird though. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. But um, what I was going to say was that it was really well done by Libic there because he was uh, able to headbutt Alex each and not uh, go to Pepper. If he had headbutted go to, go to Pepper, he would have died too quickly for, um, for uh, Charu to get into range to uh, pick up that kill and um, would obviously also not have picked up the second one. So really well done there by the support as well as the uh, AP carry. And we've got quite an interesting lane switch at the minute. We've now seen... Darius was in the middle for some time. Alexish is chilling in this bottom lane at the moment. Now we see Ezreal going to the mid lane. Darius moving back up to top. So really, really strange in terms of how these um, players are moving around the lane. Goes through Pepper. Four points into that overdrive. Moving forward. Trying to find an opportunity. Trying to find it open. Seven seconds left on Alexish's spirit rush. And we do see Diamond Prox moving forward. Paranoia is available as well. We're going to see whether or not he actually goes for this fight. Well, all that's going on. We do see pressure in this middle lane here. Genji's now pushing onto Makla. Darian's coming up from behind. And on your river, Makla's now going to get caught out. He uses the position reverser. That's going to swap Genja. A very oh, nice flash over the wall, but going to be chased down by Paranoia. And the Orb of Deception is all that's required. The Charm lands onto Linux as well, so he's going to get knocked up in just a second. Gosu Pepper being very, very smart, realizing he didn't even need to use that power fist, instead trying to catch Kennen. And so, Moscow 5 showing why they're so strong. Yeah, they're just doing the team fight really well, using uh, their excellent team play to go for this. And oh wow, did he Dragon Steel. Steal that? Dragon Steel coming out from Mocat. And not only is it a steal, he manages to get away with his life. That wow, was very well done. wow, wow. You had to use flash, but that's definitely worth it. Great, great steal. Burns the flash. It keeps everybody within a thousand gold difference. But what a steal coming out from Mocat. I'm actually looking at this, and he is not a level head, so you would ex would assume that Diamond Prox will be able to add, uh, to uh, add smite him because his team was doing the dragon, and they could get a coordinated burst of damage, but for some reason didn't quite work out for him. He didn't actually use his spot at all, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know if he... I think he didn't expect Mokat to dive forward. I mean, they see the animation landing, they seen the fact that um, uh, uh, the, the Q had landed that resonating strike ability. But even I thought maybe it's a bit crazy for Lee to jump in there. But he timed it so, so well. He picked up the steel, managed to deal all that damage, get the gold, and then flash away to safety. So, well played. And now the lanes once again have just reset. One tower has fallen. That was in the top lane. Compliments of uh, Aurelia not being in lane and, and being pressured quite a bit by Darian. He, of course, is maxing his Decimate, maxing his Crippling Strike, and just a single point into that Apprehend, using it primarily just to secure people in place, you know. Pull them back and finish them off with that Noxian Guillotine. So we do have some pressure at the moment. Livic getting a little headbutt onto Ezreal. Now Diamond Prox is moving forward, the red buff is onto Markat. Markat gets feared right back into the middle of everybody. Charu is thinking about a fight in the background though. Darren is going to be pushing the damage reduction coming out from um, Alice. That means he doesn't go down to the guillotine and it was in fact the, the final true shot barrage that picked up the kill. But while all that was going on, the damage that Diamond Prox had landed onto Markat meant he got killed as well. And just so, yeah. nonchalantly picking up two kills there. 
they're, they're doing uh, really well now. They uh, had a bit of trouble in the bot lane, which is, you know, perfectly uh, perfectly understandable against a Urgot, especially considering he uh, got two very early kills. And right now, um, a thing that I'm concerned about is that uh, all the kills of MYM are on Cheru and uh, Mackler. And while they do scale well, they don't scale they don't scale as well as um, their uh, equivalents on the other side. There's actually going to be a gank in mid. Makra is going to be jumped on by Diamond for this paranoia. And they will be picking that up most likely. Yes, they do pick it up. And that's going to be a kill for Diamond Prox. Going to uh, put him on 105. And wow, there was actually a kill, but I did not catch that. Um, so I'm going to rewind. Yeah, do a rewind so we'll keep a close eye on this fight. I think Ghost Pepper actually pulls Charu forwards. Unless there's a commitment, there we go. Pulverized headbutt in conjunction with a slicing maelstrom. So much damage coming out, actually. And of course, that is a need to see large rod and the KG's lucky pick. But something I do want to point out, look at the farm that is currently sitting on Genja. He's 64 CS to the 118 of Makla. Gold-wise, 4,100 to 5,300. So a huge, huge gold difference between the two. A very nice rocket grab, pulls Charu backwards, almost moving back to real time. Charu's now caught in between three members. Nocturne picks up that kill, he's chasing down into Libic, the red buff's ticking away. True Shot Barrage picks up that kill, so I'm going to fast forward us back to real time. And so am I. Oh, actually there's going to be a fight on Diamond Prox to see here, and Caroline's going to be pulled into Sour. Diamond Prox does go down to an excellent transcendent blade. And now he's going to be going for Ghost Pepper, he will be hitting his E and another second. That's going to give enough slow, most likely, yes he does pick up no wait One he does not hit. pick up the kill opting Loads. not to go for it while all that's going on darian is now fighting muckler as well he's in the red direction there goes the guillotine the guillotine that did not pick up the kill one extra auto attack and you can see that the cooldown was not reset so i think the cooldown works as it's intended guys just yeah, it's, i think it's half a second well that was half less than half a second that, that was less than half a second for sure but regardless three thousand gold difference 14 to 8 and it looks as though both teams are just having a little bit of fun with this game at the moment. So we are back up to live right now. Darien 5-0-2 with that Darius Hex Drinker, as well as the Giant's Belt and a Phage. So Frozen Mallet's almost completed. And dealing so much damage. So right now on MYM's side, we do have uh, Makler with his Glacier Shroud and the Brutalizer finished. Um, he's not putting out too much damage anymore, uh, relatively. I'm pretty sure that Ganja does more damage than he does. So, um, that's, this is the point where Urgot starts falling off if he, uh, if he isn't able to use his, um, his position reverse properly. And, um, one thing I have to mention about Urgot, I've, I've really wanted to say that the past few days. I love his ability names. They're seriously the best names ever. I mean, he's got the Acid Hunter and the Terror Capacitator, and the Corrosive Charge, and the best one of all, Hyperkinetic Precision Reverser. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely interesting collection of uh, ability names. And after all the action that we've seen, it has been a bit of a slowdown. The Paranoia is going to go down into Makla. A very nice flash once again coming up from Makla. That's twice we've seen that Urgot actually jumping over a very thick wall. Just to get to safety, Genja is potentially in a bit of trouble. He is going to get Dragon Kick right back into a Pulverize from Libic. The Headbutt's going to push him forward. He's going to use that Archangel to try and get away. But unfortunately, the Hadouken did actually land from Mokat. So he just became Bruce. Uh, he became Liu Kang. Flew forward with that kick. Charu is going to pop that Zonya's Algos. Survive for a couple seconds later. Mana Shield gets popped from Ghost Pepper, but it's not going to be enough to save his life. Yeah, well, actually... Um happened there is they played Senus with him, which looked hilarious. And um, they are going to be going, uh, Darren is going to be going for Makler here, but here comes the pre position reverse. That does surprise him for long enough not to die uh, to Darren, but Darren is actually going to run in at ult and he will be picking up the kill. Yes, he will, but he will get shot down in the process. So it was definitely not worth it. Got a shot down and oh wow, they're not going to go for Libic right now. Libic is going to use this Unbreakable Will though and get away, no problem. But um... Definitely not worth it for Darian. He uh, used all his summoning. <laughs> oh, wow! Yes! I have to read that out. So it's... I seen it coming on the mini map, so I flicked over to Alistair and we just caught that kill. Genja, so well played. Another tower falls for Moscow 5, so that's both the top and the bottom towers. They're going to pick up this dragon as well. 
And even though Genja's behind on farm, the kills and the drakes are helping out. Let's see if Mokhead can get another steal. And this time, unfortunately, it is... Actually, did that land? I think he got that steal. I'm fairly sure he got that steal. Okay, I'll, I'm replaying it. So, let's have a very quick look at this. We're going to go into slow-mo when he flashes over the wall. The Q lands. Yep, the steal went to Mocat. Plus 225. <laughs> Mocat, two for two in so terms good. of steals. Apparently, his timing is beastly. <laughs> well, this time it was actually, like, last time it was just really well done by him. This time, it was a bit of a mistake from Diamond Prox. Uh, he uh, miscalculated the damage because he already had used his spite and then uh, it kind of failed. So we are back up to live and for everybody that has just joined us, we've had a huge spike in viewer numbers. This is the lower bracket game. Uh, Moscow 5 lost to Fnatic yesterday, so they were dropped to the lower bracket. MYM lost to uh, XHCL. They have already won a game once today. And uh, the loser of this best of three will go out of the tournament. The winner qualifies for the next round in the lower bracket, which will be played on Sunday, I believe. Play teams are playing for a thousand euros in cash and five Remedion laptops. We are going to see a dive coming out. Death by Grass has been popped. Position reverse is going to delay the death for a little bit of time, but both of the champions available. They're going to be able to pick up the kill while well, all that's going on. Darian Court's a little bit out of position, and he goes down to a four-man MYM. And that means MYM are going to start the Baron Nash up. I actually missed the bot lane. I was looking at them, Darian dying, and they actually used the ultimate of uh, Chari with his cannon, and I'm not sure if that was worth it, to be honest, because if there is a team fight now, they're going to be at a huge disadvantage, because um, the cannon ultimate is such a huge influence on uh, team fights, and now M5 is all full health, and MYM went for Baron and got pretty low, so... Oh wow, Blue Buff does get pulled out, and uh, they will be going for it, as it seems like. Well, this right, is part of the map that Blue Buff seldom sits. And another steal coming out from Mocat! But yeah. definitely not worth it, because not he worth it that died. Time. He and instantly handed no it over, it and it went to, I believe, Ari as well. No, it actually went to Genja, so that's going to help him out a little bit. But once again, you know, steal into death into thank you very much, but... Mocat yeah, with his steals. That was, that was kind of weird. Like, it's cool that he stole it again, but that was that wouldn't even have been worth it if the blue buff had stayed on this scene, to be honest. So I don't know what he was doing there. But um, right now, all the, uh, both teams are trying to get ready for Baron. M5 recalling and getting items. Um, starting to get ready for that Baron. And that's probably where the next fight is going to be. Um, Moscow 5 in a 5k lead right now. And they are um, doing very well in the items. I'm actually going to go over the items of Darien right now because people might not be aware of uh, how to play Darius. Um, Darien plays Darius uh, with a frozen mallet and a hex drinker. And actually, Libic is going to be caught out here. He's going to use a great pulverizer and flash away, but it looks like he will be get uh, will be apprehended by Darien. He is going to. Oh, oh, <laughs> the wow. guillotine picks up the kill. That was really nicely done. Paranoia comes out from. Uh, Diamond Prox, I think you wanted to try and steal that kill. But <laughs> not this time. Not this time. So, um, this is going to be one man down. And uh, Ganon Ultimate is back up. So, they will be able to use that... Um, what was it? Slicing Millstrom. I'm trying to learn the names as well. But um, they will be able to use that. Still, though, they're, they're one man down. And M5 should have been able to pick up the Baron. I'm surprised they didn't go for that, to be honest. I think uh, Moscow 5, they're, they're having a bit of fun with this game. There comes a flash into position reverse. Goes through Pepper, immediately overdrives and flashes away. He's going to be trying to get away as quickly as he can. The Blade Surge does come out from Caroline. And he's going to be one dead Gosu Pepper, unfortunately. But quite a lot of abilities used there. Flash, position reverser, flash from Caroline as well. And uh, just for the kill on the assist character. But I suppose every kill helps, and of course now if they can try to pick up the Baron off this, knowing that Alexis is in their bottom lane, may be beneficial for them. So they will be going for, uh, they're probably going to be going for Baron right now. Um, they do still have the Slicing Maelstrom up, so they can definitely teamfight as well. Actually they're all hiding around the corner, which is pretty cool. Um, the ward coverage some dances is coming in <laughs> Yeah, Makata is going to die for. He immediately wow, takes hit. a Dragon's Rage kick backwards. Slicing Maelstrom is popped from Charlie, so he's going to be dealing quite a lot of damage. Manages to sell out for a couple of seconds before getting guillotined down from the dunk. Now that uh, 
Alexis has joined the party. Those spirit rashes, as well as all of the damage from Orbit Deception, he's just going to completely melt the remaining MYM members. And what looked like a good engage from the beginning immediately gets turned around. Moscow 5 will pick up this Baron kill, but we're going to follow Gosu Pepper against Libic. The bull or the robot, I think the boxing robot's got this one. He's just going to let that electrical surge damage tick away. Static field. It's duped a little bit. Silence comes out. One more hit and Gosu Pepper with the ace. I was confused as to why they kicked Darren into the team and they do lose it now. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to come back from that because they were one, they were one, one down and also a lot of gold behind. Um, around 8k gold. 7.5 actually. And um, with a Baron buff, M5 would have definitely been able to, uh, to push that down. So I'm not sure what they did on that last team fight. Like, it was a good engage. Um, but the dragon kick or the kick into um, into the team of Darian was kind of strange um, because Darian kind of likes being up close to people. Yeah, um, it is true. I mean, so because like Dari the Darius, his I think Darius's weakness is that he's really bad against ranged because the only gap closure he has is very short ranged. Um, but they basically said, "Hey, we want you to kill us." And well. Well, Darian complied. Let's wrap this up right now, guys. For everybody that knows, Moscow 5 have now taken MYM out of the Medion Challenge. They have qualified for the very next round. You can see there's the final kill scores. I'm going to pull up the bracket very shortly and just show everybody the tournament that's busy happening. This is, of course, the Esports Heaven Medion Challenge, brought to you by Intel, Medion, Chaos TV, and Shoutcaster by myself, Quickshot, and Seazone. This is a double elimination best of three now that we're down to the round of eight. And... Uh, Asylum have already been knocked out, as have now MYM and BBN, sorry. So Moscow 5 qualify for the lower bracket semi-final, I believe. XHCL will be facing off against Team Mega Shock on the 3rd of June, which is this Sunday. Uh, and of course, that's going to be a pretty good game. I believe that's the only game on Sunday, unless I'm mistaken. Yep, it's going to be the only one on Sunday, 9 p.m. There is a tournament running at the moment, guys. If you head over to the results page, vote for um, the... Man of the match, simply click on the results and you can throw up a name there. You'll be able to vote. You can win yourselves a Medion Gaming Hamper. If you've had some fun with myself and C-Zone, head over to facebook.com forward slash C-Zone owns. That's with a zero and a Z. Or facebook.com forward slash quickshot. Q-U-1-K-S-H-0-T. C-Zone, would you like to say cheers to everybody? Yes, cheers everyone. Uh, it was fun doing this and I'm very happy you guys all joined us. Um, how many views did we actually have on Switch? Because I'm at uh, 2,800 and... I love every single one of you. We managed to jump up to 17,000 viewers. So to everybody that was on stream and saying thank you, you know, uh, tuned in with us and stayed with us, thank you so much. It's been a great, great evening. So I'm off. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, at QuickShot, you know, the Facebook pages. And until next time, see you around. Cheers, Season. See you guys.